Hello, everyone. Today is Friday, February the 17th. I'm Ryan Hill. I'm John Galantis. You're listening to Clearview Today with Dr. Abaddon Shah, the daily show that engages mind and heart for the gospel of Jesus Christ. You can find us online at clearviewtodayshow.com, or if you have any questions for Dr. Shah or suggestions for future episodes, send us a text at 252-582-5028, or you can email us at contact at clearviewtodayshow.com. That's right, and you guys can help us keep this conversation going in the airwaves by supporting the podcast, liking it online, sharing it online, and just leaving us a good review. That's iTunes, Spotify, Audible, anywhere you might get your podcast from. Make sure you leave us a good five-star review, and uh, we're going to help you do that by leaving you a link to do it in the description. All you got to do is click the link and go write the review, and you need to write a nice good review. Absolutely. If you write us a good review, we'll do one for you. That's right. We'll read it on the air. We'll, we'll say re- good things about you and your family. Oh, I meant we'd review them. Oh, you don't As want listeners. That. No, you don't want that. <laughs> I'm a harsh critic. <laughs> That's not true. That's not true. John, you want to read the verse of the day today? Yeah, man, let's do it. It comes from 2 Corinthians 12, 19, and he said to me, my grace is sufficient for you, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, most gladly, I will rather boast in my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest upon me. I love this verse because it flips what the world desires on its head. Mm-hmm. You know, we, we want to strive to be the best. We want to strive to be the smartest or the fastest or the strongest. And not that those are bad things to work toward, but that's not what defines us. And that's not where our strength comes right, from. We right. boast in God's strength that, like this verse reminds us, is made perfect in our weakness. Mm-hmm. And not only that, but it's a weakness that displays the strength of God. I think nowadays we're quick to boast in our infirmities, Mm -hmm. but it's so that we can garner sympathy or so we can put the blame on someone else or so we can tear down some establishment or some organization or some authority figure in life. And that's why we boast about how oppressed we are. What Paul is saying is, listen, I am oppressed and I am made weak and things are coming against me, but I'm talking about it for the glory of God so that Mm -hmm. you can see how strong God actually is in the face of my weakness. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I've been on Facebook on our Clearview Today Facebook, yeah. I've been looking at the text thread. Which, if you're not following us on Facebook, make sure you do that. Clearview Today on Facebook. Mm-hmm. You can also follow us on Instagram mm-hmm. as well for yes. First of the Day images and uh, the video podcast. Yep. And we have a text thread, 252-582-5028, where you can uh, you know, write in and text your opinions, mm-hmm. your questions. The fry debate that we had is blowing I, <laughs> up. I have noticed that. Like so, like a it's couple been like two weeks. A couple of uh, yeah, a couple weeks ago, a week maybe. We uh, we recorded an episode, and at the end, it was who has the or no ketchup was missing. Ketchup was what missing. What do you dunk your fries? And my in? wife started all this nonsense, by the way, because she is the one that recommended that. Well, that was a good question. It was a good question. We talked about it. And then we did uh, who someone someone else wrote in yeah. wrote who has the best fries. And they just haven't stopped. It Typically, just like has people spread like wildfire. Yeah, yeah. So I'm gonna I'm gonna try to put an end to the fried debate because people are starting to get. I, I had to threaten to block somebody because of course. they said they dip their fries in honey. <laughs> Elizabeth from North Carolina said I dip my fries in honey. I saw that, and so here's the only thing I can think of. Did you see I, me tell her I was gonna block her? I did. I did. <laughs> that is an unusual choice for me, but I have had like. Like the hot honey mm-hmm. uh, fried chicken from Biscuitville. We mm-hmm. talked about that with when Stu Epperson was on the show. Mm-hmm. That is very good. And it's yeah. that, that, that salty versus the sweet of the honey. And I also dunk my fries in milkshakes sometimes. Yeah, we talked about that. So that's the, the salty of the fries and the sweet of the milkshake. So, I, I mean, I, I'd be willing I to wasn't, try it. And I wasn't, jo- I was joking. I'm not going to block. Right. For, but I, but right. I did think that was pretty gross that she dipped it in honey. Um, so I'm going to try to, I'm going to try to take attention away from the fried debate because it's really heating up. Sure. Who's got the best burger? Mm. Who's got the best burger you can buy? I would have at one point said Five Guys. Five Guys does have a Five Guys is my jam for show. Very good burger. I think lately it's been Texas Roadhouse. Really? Yeah. And I know that's not a burger place, but I'm I'm not going to lie. I love Texas Roadhouse burgers. You know what burger I really like? And this is kind of, I mean, it's chain restaurant, Mm -hmm. whatever. I really like Red Robin. I think I went to Red Robin once. Um, it was like 10 o'clock. They were trying to close. Oh, yeah. And so I definitely did not like the burger, but I would be willing to give it another shot just because it, it's probably my fault that burger was bad because they were like, like trying Robin. to close down. I like Red Robin. I don't know if I've ever had a burger from Texas Roadhouse, but I can, I mean, Steakhouse, I imagine Delicious. it would be Delicious. Fuddruckers is good. Yes, That's a is. great burger. I haven't had that in a long I know. time. I, we had, Ellie and I had one a few years back, but I remember it being a really great burger. Yeah. Five Guys is a good staple. Of course, we're talking. I, mean, I don't think nobody's going to choose like a McDonald's or a Wendy's burger, but I mean, you can, I guess, if you want to. But I'm talking like nice, thick, good quality burgers. I'd be willing to try Angus Barn 
Angus Barn. Is I've heard Angus Barn is like superior, delicious. Burger. It's like like once you've tasted that, you know, like like the milk and honey of the promise. Yeah, land, you ain't ever going. You back. can't. You're not gonna go back. Yeah, I'll see Five Guys. I'll do a a Five Guys burger is so filling to me. I'll just do a regular double cheeseburger and no fries at all. Just just do the burger, and I'm completely satisfied. Five Guys does have a filling burger. Mm -hmm. Plus, I mean, the fries, fries they give you is like. Three and a half pounds worth of fries. Yeah, it's I don't, enormous. That, that was why. That was why when David said the um, that he would do Five Guys fries. I don't really think they're that good. I mean, they're good. Don't get me they're wrong. Good. They're, they're good. They're good fries. Strong. They're very seasoned. Seasoned real strong. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm trying to think if there's any superior burgers right now. Texas Roadhouse has got the hmm. got the best burger for okay. me. There you go. Yeah, I'll, I'll I'll give some thinking on it, but hopefully we'll just stop getting our phones blown up about how much these people love fries. <laughs> no, well, I was gonna say write in and let us know what your go-to burger yeah. is because maybe it's not one that cookout, we cookout, 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 cookout's got a good cookout burger. does have a good. It's burger. not. I wouldn't put it up there with the others that we mentioned, but it is good. It is good. You would take it over like a like a five guys. Mm, no, cookout's just local. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah I would say maybe the best local, for sure. I'll give you that. I'll give you that. Yeah, the best like drive-through burger. Yeah, I would say cookout. Yeah, yeah. Um, but write in and let us know what your go-to burger is. Maybe you have one that we aren't aware of. Maybe you have some sort of secret knowledge that you want to bestow on us. I also us. like the urgency in death. Cookout, 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 <laughs> cookout. cookout. <laughs> that was real urgent. Let us know your favorite burger. Uh, 252-582-5028. We're going to get Dr. Shaw for our main segment today. We've got an exciting episode planned for you. So stay tuned. We'll be right back. Good morning, afternoon, evening, Clearview Today listeners. My name is John. And I'm David. And we just want to take a quick second and let you know about another way that you can keep in touch with Dr. Shah's work. And that is his weekly podcast series, Sermons by Abadan Shah, PhD. As a lot of you may know, or maybe some of you don't know. If you don't know, you do now. And if you don't know, then maybe just pop off the podcast. David, I'm just playing. pop off the podcast. I'm just playing. Keep listening. <laughs> Dr. Shaw is actually the lead pastor of Clearview Church in North Carolina. Every single weekend, he preaches expository messages that challenge and inspire us to live God-honoring lives. Well, one of the four core values of Clearview Church is that we're a Bible-believing church. So every sermon is coming directly from Scripture, which is great because that guarantees that there are timeless truths that are constantly applicable to our lives. This is a great resource because whether you're driving, whether you're cleaning the house, whether you're working out, you can always benefit from hearing the Word of God spoken into your life. And God's Word is always going to do something new for you every time you hear it. Sometimes it's conviction, and sometimes it's encouragement. But know that every time you listen to God's Word, you're inviting the Holy Spirit to move and work in your life. You guys can check out the Sermons by Abaddon Shah PhD podcast. First and foremost, check it out on our church app. Uh, that's the Clearview app. You can get that in the Google Play Store. You can get that on iTunes. But you can also find the podcast on the Apple Podcast app or on our website at clearviewbc.org. And listen, if you've got a little extra time on your hands, you just want to do some further reading, you can also read the transcripts of those sermons. Those are available on Dr. Shah's website, abadanshah.com. And we're going to leave you guys a little link in the description so you can follow it. But for right now, David... Let's hop back in. All right. Welcome back to Clearview Today with Dr. Abadan Shah, the daily show that engages mind and heart for the gospel of Jesus Christ. You can find us online at clearviewtodayshow.com. If you have any questions or suggestions for future episodes, make sure you send us a text at 252-582-5028. Dr. Shah, welcome to the studio today. It's good to be here. Happy Friday, Dr. Happy Shaw. Friday. Happy Friday, Ryan. You know what that means. What's that? It means that it's lightning round questions. You're today. getting ahead of the game, I'm Ryan. So, I'm, so, I'm excited. Damn. I'm excited about lightning. Is it lightning or lightning? Light, lightning. lightning. We're not going to ask you questions about like professional lightning. Yeah, but we did all. We did install all this lightning, coincidentally <laughs> that enough, is true. on a Friday. There so. you go. Uh, before before you get a little ahead I'm of sorry. yourself, we've go got ahead. to still follow the rules. I know. <laughs> Unfortunately. If you're joining us for the first time, we want to welcome you to the show. Dr. Abadan Shah is a PhD, New Testament textual criticism, professor at Carolina University, author, full-time pastor, and the host of today's episode. You can follow him on his blog. That's abadanshah.com. That's mm -hmm. right. And just be, in case you haven't listened to a lightning round episode question yet, mm -hmm. A lightning round questions episode yet is the order that those words are supposed to be in. Uh, these are questions that have been submitted by you, the listeners and viewers. So when we tell you to text that number, we really do mean it. We, need, we don't just like say in numbers. We like right. to hear y'all's questions. Yes. So we're going to take these and we're going to pose them to Dr. Shaw. That's right. And uh, you get to hear your questions answered live on the radio. So make sure if you maybe the episode today will jog a question for you or maybe 
maybe make you remember, hey, I've been meaning to ask that. Send those questions in, 252-582-5028. We got some really good questions today. Yeah, we also get so many that we we tend to try to group them in terms of theme. And so yeah. I know you and I were talking earlier, like we just finished up our series on love mm-hmm. earlier this week. Uh, so we wanted to pick questions that kind of had that love theme. It is February after all. Right. Yeah. It's important. That's right. So you want me to take the first one? Uh, yeah, you can okay. if you want. I'll take the first one. Uh, so this question comes from Ginger B. Ginger B. Ginger okay. B. Okay. Uh, she wants to gingerbread. know. Gingerbread. <laughs> ginger. Yeah, I was going to say. <laughs> like, does that mean gingerbread? Do you know the gingerbread Okay. Man? I don't know. Uh, Ginger wants to know, why does God love us being we are so unlovable? Mm. Wow. That's a great question. And you know, the further you grow in your Christian life, the longer you live, and the more years you have behind uh, in your spiritual journey, the more you wonder that mm-hmm. question. Mm-hmm. You ask that question, why does God love us being so, we are so unlovable? Early on in my ministry, or early on in my salvation journey, I should say, really, uh, I felt like, man, God really lucked out when he got me. Because now <laughs> now I can really... I the whole package. Uh, yeah, because see, look, I got all these, uh, the best of the best, you know, the upbringing and the education... Uh, of course, the good looks, but also, uh, you know, all the... <laughs> you were going to sneak that in there. I almost didn't catch it. <laughs> you know, the IQ and the EQ, you know, I'm, I'm just, I'm intelligent. I can also pick up emotional cues. If I mean, this I dude says one EQ? more cool thing, he's in. <laughs> oh, man, that's awesome. Yeah. But now, the longer you live and, and walk with God and go through the ups and downs in life, the good times and also the times of failures and disappointments, then that's when you go... I don't understand, Mm. you know? Uh, And so that's a great question. Why does God love us being we are so unlovable? That's his nature. Mm -hmm, One mm -hmm. of his attributes is love. It's a communicable attribute. They're incommunicable and then communicable. Communicable are those attributes that he actually shares with us. Mm. You know, he he has made us in his image. So love, God is love. Mm -hmm. You know, the Bible talks about that. And so um, he he loves us Mm -hmm. in spite of who we are. Uh, show me the worst criminal, show me the worst person that you know of, you know, just degenerate, horrible, terrible person. God still loves that person. That's right. Mm-hmm. And he gave Jesus, his son, uh, to die on the cross for that person. Mm-hmm. Jesus, you know, we sometimes think like God is just grabbing Jesus by the collar and saying, now you go die for them. <laughs> no, Jesus loves us right. enough to come down and willing to give his life for us. That's love. Mm-hmm. And he said that to his disciples, you know, um, love one another as I have loved you. Mm-hmm. You know, this is the model. And then, of course, uh, you know, First Corinthians 13, Paul kind of breaks down the attribute of love uh, for the Corinthian believers because they were living very contrary to what love is supposed to be like. Mm-hmm. So it is his nature. And, you know, sometimes we say this this thing. We say that God doesn't need us. And that's true, 100%. For his existence, God doesn't need us at all. Mm-hmm. He is perfectly fine. Even for fellowship, God doesn't need us. He's perfectly fine. Trinity uh, had plenty of fellowship in mm-hmm. you know, a Father, Son, Spirit. Having said that, uh, one reason I believe God made us is because it gives him the opportunity to share his love mm-hmm. with us. Mm-hmm. You know, Of course, he can share the love in himself, in the three persons, but there's something about loving somebody who doesn't equally um, and actively love you back. Right. Mm. That's why we love little babies, you mm-hmm. know, because they're so helpless mm-hmm. and they're so innocent, and so you you just your heart just goes out. What can that baby do for you? You know, some people say, "Oh, he saw me, or he he's like me, or he responds to me." Maybe I think most times the babies are just like. Feed me, change me. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Feed me, change me. Feed That's me, it. change me. That's it. So why do we love them so much? Because you know we just want to. Uh, our, our, we are geared that way to pour our love towards somebody who is, you know, helpless, innocent, even unlovable. Yeah. Wow. And and kind of to mirror what you've been saying all of last week and and kind of at the beginning of this week is that that is the nature of God coming through. Mm-hmm. You know, we tend to think that love is this outpouring of positive emotion, that mm-hmm. I just care about you so much or that I just mm-hmm. feel all this emotion for you. And if I don't feel that, then I must not love you or you must mm-hmm. not be loving me. But God doesn't operate that way. It's, yeah. it's part of his nature. And the love that we have 
is is that nature of God, I guess. It's action. That he's given to us. Amen. It's action. Yeah. That's why, you know, we, we read, for God so loved the world that he gave mm-hmm. his only begotten son, his one and only son, his one of a kind son, mm-hmm. um, that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Right. So he gave. That's right. So that's love. I love that. It's beautiful. Uh, I've got one from uh, Martin S. I've always heard in Bible studies and sermons that there are three types of love, eros, phileo, and agape. But I've also heard about a fourth one, which is storge or storge. I'm not sure how to say storge. It. Storge. What is that about? What is so? Storge this is love? really coming from C.S. Lewis's book called The Four Loves. Okay, Four Loves is a great book. I read this years and years ago, and even heard it on on cassette tape back in the day. Oh wow! It was cassette, cassette tape. Wow. So in this book, he talks about. You know, affection, friendship, eros, charity. So affection uh, would be uh, storge. Friendship would be phileo uh, or philos. Eros would be eros, right? Mm -hmm. The erotic love. Mm -hmm. And charity is where he puts agape. Now, there is a place for this, and by no means will I ever say that C.S. Lewis was not a scholar. He was an amazing classicist. He was uh, uh, just, a, just, just a great giant, uh, a great giant. He was a giant hmm. in British literature, and of course, becoming Christian, he was also an apologist mm-hmm. for the faith. But I think here, he overplayed that card, mm. okay? Because, yes, to some extent, there are differences in those words, mm-hmm. yeah, right? So, storge, affection, just this kind of, uh, like, I love somebody, just like, let's like, I love hamburger kind of thing. Right. Um, or, friendship means more that phileo, brotherly love. Uh, eros, you know, erotic, sexual love between partners, husband, wife, or, you know, whatever. And charity is agape, the the divine kind of love. All that is true. But since James Barr, James Barr wrote this book, The Semantics of Biblical Language, mm-hmm. uh, you know, our understanding of how words are used has changed. Mm-hmm. So sometimes, you know, you read the Gospels and it a word is used like storge and phileo. Mm-hmm. And it is not the divine love. Like when you talk about Peter and Jesus having that conversation after the resurrection, do you love me? Do you love me? Do you love me? It's it's agape and phileo. So what was Jesus doing? And if you try to make a point based on, well, here he was talking about this kind of love, and then he was talking about this kind of love. But then there are other passages where it's strictly, no other way, but taken as divine love, mm-hmm. and yet the word is phileo. Hmm. Er- Eros doesn't come. Eros is kind of pretty uh, it's said in its way. Right. <laughs> it's yeah. erotic. It's pretty understood what that <laughs> yeah. one is. Yeah. But storge and phileo oftentimes show up when you would expect only agape hmm. or agapao. So I would say, yeah, it has its place, mm-hmm. but let's not over overdo that. Mm. Right. Our understanding of etymology has changed. Our understanding of word usages has changed. Uh, um, y- you know... English is so poor when it comes to that. Mm-hmm. I love hamburger. I love my dog. I love my wife. Yeah. I love Jesus. Yeah. <laughs> Are all of those equal? It's the same word. Yeah. 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 Not the same way. Right. The way I love my wife is not the same way I love Jesus. Right. 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 And the way I love hamburger is not the way I love my dog. <laughs> you know, or the yeah. way I love my dog is not the way I love Jesus. I right. mean, so it's, it's different. Right. But we just have this one word, love. Yeah. And I think that kind of goes back to your point from earlier last week. It's not only different modes of affection it's not l- different levels of intensity they're completely different categories themselves mm-hmm. yeah, yeah yeah and so but, but, and again when it comes to usages um sometimes they're just used stylistically mm-hmm. and they're not let's not make a sermon out of it right mm-hmm. so i believe in this particular work by c.s lewis the four loves uh i think it's a it's sort of weak yeah overreaching a little bit yeah it's overreaching is it is it fair to say that that's another word for love but not another type of love altogether yeah i would say so 
maybe at one time, you know, there are synchronic meanings and diachronic meanings. Synchronic mm-hmm. is what that word meant at a particular place in time. Mm-hmm. Diachronic is how the word meaning has shifted and changed over time. Mm-hmm. That's why, you know, you can do word studies in, in the Bible, but unless you understand the principles of word study and understand how language has shifted, especially the Old Testament, because mm-hmm. New Testament is only a hundred year period, right? Mm-hmm. Even less. Old Testament, we're dealing with, gosh, we're dealing with like pre-flood, yeah. right? Yeah. I mean, those accounts in Genesis came from somewhere. Yeah. So somebody was hanging on to some records or, mm-hmm. or um, you know, whatever they passed on bits and pieces of detail to Moses. So language shifted. Language mm-hmm. has changed. And, um, you know, unless you think the first language was Hebrew, some people believe that actually. Mm. Uh, some very good scholars uh, and apologists like uh, Jonathan Sarfati believes that um, Hebrew was that first language. That Adam and Eve were speaking Hebrew, like even yes, pre-flood. Yes. Wow. And, and and it has a point, right? Albeit, I don't quite agree with it. Mm-hmm. The point is that some of the names that have been given to biblical places, mm-hmm. characters, mm-hmm. they're very Hebrew. Mm-hmm. So the question is: Is that a translation of some other language, mm-hmm. right? Or was the language itself Hebrew? Sarfati and others will say the language itself was Hebrew, mm. and then came all the other languages. I have, I see their point, mm. yeah. and it's a valid point. But when you study languages and 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 just the history of languages, uh, you, it's it's hard to believe that the Hebrew was the first language, like in the garden. Right? Mm. Maybe it was. Uh, you say why? 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 Why do you struggle with that? Because. Um, when you study languages like the Canaanite languages, the Phoenician language, the big question is which one came first? Mm-hmm. Because when you look at the characters, the letters, the formation of those alphabets in Phoenician languages and compare that to Hebrews, um, the Phoenician stuff is a little more primitive. Mm. And Hebrew is a little more advanced. So mm-hmm. could it be? And again, I'm being very simplistic here. So if any linguists out there just... Don't be mad with me. I'm just, <laughs> I'm just kind of, you know, talking about it without my notes in front of me. Uh, but just based on how those letters are formed, it seems like Phoenician came first and then came Hebrew. Right. Hmm. Some of the some of the, what's in the Hebrew language is sort of derivative from the Phoenician. That's what scholars have concluded. Okay. So again, it's not a closed case. Right. It could very well be Hebrews. The language, he, uh, Hebrew language, and Hebrews, the language Hebrew would be the first one, and I would be the happiest person in the world if it was. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, true. No problem there. Yeah. Maybe we can do it. I think we went to, uh, to that later. Yeah, that I know. Of, right? I was like, hmm, tell me more. Yeah, I kind of want to dive deeper yeah. into this. You know, the, one, one thing I'll say before I move on languages, study of languages, linguistics is such a fascinating um, uh, field. Mm-hmm. And I, I really want to do more and more of that. You know, because you learn so much and you understand so much. Uh, there's a scholar by the name, of, there was a scholar by the name of Cyrus Gordon. He was Jewish. Other than him, I don't know if any scholar that comes close to understanding different languages. I mean, he knew languages like Hebrew and, um, you know, the Egyptian hieroglyphs mm-hmm. and Greek and Syriac and Aramaic and Hittite and um, Ugaritic. And he knew these languages so well that he was able to go back and forth between this literature and that literature, and he was able to draw conclusions. And I have a book sitting on my coffee table, uh, not coffee table, end table in my house that I need to read, Mm -hmm. just need to have some time Mm -hmm. and understanding. But, you know, once you understand languages and you see, you, you begin to see the connections of which people came from where, and how the stories are being shared and, and, and how we have a common story. I mean, we agree with the Bible, honestly. Mm-hmm. Unbelievable. So languages are a lot of fun. Yeah. Wow. Very Again, cool. I, I went on a rabbit trail. No, no I mean, it. I think you're right. I mean, l- think about how m- deeper your sermons get when you explain, hey, listen, I know what we've made this out to mean in English, but yeah. what Paul really meant is this, because the word he uses right. doesn't mean what we think it uses. It uses this. It puts you in the perspective of what the authors were trying to say, and yeah. right. it, it is very important. It's so important to remember that original language. Yeah, that's right. Mm-hmm. So our next question comes from Rebecca G. Uh, Rebecca says, did God truly hate Esau? Yikes, that's a that's a big one. I, I guess you're quoting from Malachi. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, Jacob have I loved, and Esau I have hated. Uh, you know, and and again, a very tough 
to understand. My big problem is Jacob I have loved. Mm. <laughs> right? Forget about Esau I have hated. God should hate all of us for how we are and how we behave. Whether it's we cannot help it or whether it's our choice, either way, we're not nice people. Mm-hmm. That's a good point. You always think about God being a God of love. It's wrong for him to hate, but it's it's almost yeah. the opposite. Why why are you favoring and why are you loving Joseph when like the first question said yeah, we're all unlovable? I love that it's linked to that first yeah, question. Yeah, it really is. Yeah. I had never thought of it like that. Mm-hmm. It's almost like you're asking the wrong question sort of thing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. No, I I, w- I would say um yes, but if you look at the context in which Malachi was given. Mm-hmm. Okay? So, let's go there for a second if you don't mind. Sure. Uh, so kind of get get the context because if you remove the context and just take it for whatever it is, then 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 we get into a lot of debates that are more systematic theology debates when really they should be biblical theology debates. So if you go to uh, Malachi chapter one, starting in verse one, the burden of the Lord to Israel by Malachi, I have loved you, says the Lord. Yet you say, in what way have you loved us? Was not Esau Jacob's brother? Uh, says the Lord, yet Jacob I have loved, but Esau I have hated, and laid waste his mountains and his heritage for the jackals of the wilderness. Even though Edom has said, we have been impoverished, but we will return and build the desolate places. Thus says the Lord of hosts, they may build, but I will throw down. They shall be called a territory of wickedness, a people against whom the Lord will have indignation forever. Your eyes shall see, and you shall say, the Lord is magnificent is magnified beyond the border of Israel. Now, context. Context is this. The people of Judah, right? Malachi is writing to that time period, one of the last word of God before the silent period. Mm -hmm. Uh, They had become sort of cynical. They had become very bitter towards God. Mm -hmm. And they were saying things like, you keep telling us you love us. How? Why? Mm -hmm. I mean, for one, you scattered us all over the world. Mm -hmm. And then some of our families are now stuck in Babylon. Others are back in Judea or Jerusalem. And our temple is barely standing. And, you know, it's, it's nothing like what Solomon had. I mean, you love us. Prove to us. Mm. If you keep the context in mind, that's when God says, compare this with how Esau is. You think your situation is bad? Compare that with Esau. Mm. What do you see? You see everything laid waste. You see his his heritage laid waste. You see jackals of the wilderness all over the place, and you're telling me that I don't care about you. Look at how good you have it. I brought you back. I preserved you as a people. So God is, is actually chastising them mm-hmm. because of their bitterness and their doubt and their questioning. They, they're, they're interrogating God. Right. Mm. They're putting God on, on the stand and saying, prove to us that you love us. Mm-hmm. Wow. And God said, look around and see your brother. See, see the other line that came down from Isaac, Esau. Mm-hmm. See what do you think. Mm-hmm. And sometimes we need to do the same thing. Yeah. When we have bitterness coming in our heart or resentment or you know, this feeling of why not me and, and you know, how dare, just really examine yourself in light of how others are. Mm-hmm. I do that sometimes, not to make myself feel better in the sense of like I'm better than them because I'm not. None of us are. But doing a little bit of surveying around, you'll realize, man, I, I have it so good. Yeah. Mm-hmm. God has been so good to me. And it takes away that whole, why am I not loved? And why don't you care about me? And if you cared about me, you would, you know, it's like, you know what? I don't deserve anything. Right. Wow. So. It's one of those weird things where it's just like, this is a verse that we love to pick apart. It's almost like a bullet that we can. It's almost like Christians do the same thing against God. It's like, Mm. this is our ammo against God to where we can say, listen, God absolutely shows favorites and Mm. God does hate people. He doesn't love everybody. See, see this right here. But it's like you said, within the context of Malachi, Mm -hmm. and I really, we've been talking a little bit about doing a series on Malachi here on the show. I I think, I think, you know, this may be the start of something really cool because now I really want to take this Malachi conversation a little more forward because 
you preached a series a while back, a few years back uh, on Malachi that I know Ryan, you really love. I love it. One of my favorites. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, man. I think maybe this is something we can. I I love it because Malachi is one of those books that people just sort of gloss over. Like, oh, Mm -hmm. it's a little tiny book at the end of the Old Testament. I don't really understand it, Mm. so I'm going to skip over it. No, there's so much there. And it's so, I mean, it's the last book in the old testament that's that's significant in yeah. and of itself yep and when it. you when you really uh study it and the imagery behind it um y- you're blown away mm-hmm. at how god is intense and passionate in his love towards us that's mm-hmm. right okay so he's not this this deity who just sits there uh just like oh, i love you no it's just he's passionately coming after us that's to love right. us that's that right passionate pursuit yeah oh man so cool so before we Go to our regular closing. I do want to say a quick congratulations, yes, if I could, absolutely, to our good buddy Mike, Mike S. Mike S. Yep. Yeah. Right, Mike from, S. Right here yes. in North Carolina. Yeah, his wife just had the baby. Yep. Yay! Cool. And so we're not going to mention any more names or things like that because <laughs> this is their time to celebrate. Yeah. They're going to yeah. do that. But we just want to say, uh, you guys, we love you. Mm-hmm. We thank you for your support. You always encouraging us and sending us funny things yep. and questions and all that your family is a blessing it really right. is and and we pray that this baby will be healthy and follow the lord one day and i know your other one is too so we're so happy amen. so happy amen we love both so of you guys you. thank you for your support like dr shaw said we are so, we're so thankful for your support it means more to us than you know if you enjoyed today's topic or if you like you have questions you'd like answered on an episode of lightning round questions make sure you send those in to 252-582-5028 you can also visit us online at clearviewtodayshow.com and you can partner with us financially on that same website every gift that you give goes to reaching countless others with the message of the hope of the gospel of Jesus Christ we love you guys we'll see you next time on clearview today